Hello fellow nerds and book lovers. Sorry I've been gone so long. Moving, life, summer. Sometimes it just takes up all of your time and you can't get to the things you really love to do. Uh, which for me, books are one of those huge things that I love. I'm about 20, 30 books behind as far as getting reviews. So I'm just gonna have to cut my losses and pick up on the last book that I, uh, that I read and start reviewing from there. And hopefully in the future, I'll have some time set aside that I can get caught up. Uh, the last book that I read was uh, Yellow Eyes by John Ringo. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that uh, I'm a big John Ringo fan. Uh, he plays it fast and loose with his physics and with his human nature and his logic on some things. But uh, he does just enough things that, that fit with human nature and fit with logic and cynicism and black humor that uh, he's one of my... Uh, indulgences. I, I just love his books. I love his stories. I love his characters. Uh, Yellow Eyes was set in the state of Panama, the country of Panama. He, John Ringo has a, a dislike and a distaste for the feudal system of Latin American countries. And, and he's absolutely right. Uh, it, they are to be disdained. They are to be uh, mocked. And, and he does that quite a bit in this book. Uh, it goes, he's got some of the ACS, but it moves away, this book moves away from the ACS and actually shows the view from the postling side a little bit more uh, than he does in other books. He has a few characters, the main one probably being a Guano, Guano Um uh, And he brings in some AIs and some AIs that uh, uh, are part of a naval ship system, some, a couple of cruisers. Really well done. Really well done. Um, most John Ringo books, you know, I love. This is in the Aldenado series. I definitely suggest you read it. It's uh, it's science fiction. Like I say, he plays it a little loose on the numbers, on the fantasy. He even admits at the end of this book that he uh, changed the geography to make it fit what he wanted to happen in the book. And all that's fine. It still it, it makes a really good story. I'm going to give the spoiler alert at this point. I'm going to go through my notes and we'll get into some of the specifics of the book. It starts out, he gives background of Duncan. Duncan is somebody that you know from the, the previous uh, Aldenada series books. Um, he's had a nervous breakdown. He gets put back on Earth. He, he's awesome. Dun Duncan's an awesome character. Other characters that he brings into this book are... Majigna Miranda. She's a hundred year old uh, Panamanian woman that fought in the war, but because of the rules, the classic rules, you know, they are looking for old soldiers to be leaders in this new fight. And so she is uh, put through the rejuvenation process and becomes a leader and a prominent, powerful leader. Uh, somebody from the interior, from one of the interior Panamanian clans, awesome character. Uh, he shows the Dar Hell manipulating the, the information and the overall intelligence uh, that the Earth has and how they're trying to derail and sabotage. And here's where uh, it, it's well within their power, but the only problem I have with the Dar Hell being able to do this is it's hard for me not to believe that they could be stopped. I mean, if you have somebody with your orbitals, with your communications, that, with your artificial intelligences, that almost, most of our military in this book is at the behest of the Dar Hell, and there's so many ways to destroy things. You have to have a hundred things go right for, for, to win a lot of situations. A lot of them can go right by luck, but... There's just so many ways that the Dar Hell could destroy with the utter superiority of intelligence and communications and technology that they have. Uh, it, it always bugs me reading these books that the Dar Hell, you know, don't destroy them all. But, you know, if you had them so that they just destroyed all, you wouldn't have the story. So I get it. But I, I wish that there was a bit more explanation on why they don't. Uh, introduces Captain Nair. He's an awesome captain. He's he's captain of the ship Des Moines. Uh, Des Moines has the AID that has been shipped 
in, in utter isolation. And for a computer, this isolation has been uh, millennial and has went absolutely mad. And this AI idea is put in the ship and it turns out to be Daisy. Uh, as far as I can tell, I'd, I'm not sure about this, but I think Daisy is based on the Daisy from the little Abner uh, program. Uh, the, the, the beautiful, busty uh, female character from Little Abner. Um, I, I think that's who it is. It, it, she plays that really well. She takes on that personality as far as her human personality. And then he adds a really awesome idea. That, that there's the belief with almost anybody that works with ships and anybody that works on the seas that, that the ship itself has an intelligence, has a spirit, has a soul. And he just brings that into fruition into this. And this AID, this artificial intelligence, is put in the ship to run it. And it runs into these memories, which are actually somehow embedded into the whole of the ship. And, and that is the gestalt, the soul of the Des Moines. And the, this insane ID, AID, this insane artificial intelligence, merges with the Des Moines and makes this new person, it, person Daisy. Loved it. Loved the concept. Loved the mystery. Loved how it tied in with common beliefs, common myths, common legends. Uh, the personality was awesome. Uh, and the nice thing about this one is it, it gave a reason why when the Dar Hell tried to take control of these AIDs at critical points in the battles to destroy the ship, you know, this is an AID that's insane and it's combined with the soul of the ship. They're able to resist and ignore the dark hell and become the ghost in the machine to actually become a sentience uh, with a self-will uh, as part of the ship, part of the hero, part of the plot. It's awesome. Love that part. Uh, another character they introduce is Boyd. He's the CEO of one of the most powerful shipping uh, uh, companies that works out of Panama. And they make Boyd, they want him to do the logistics. And he's up against the, the Panamanian feudal system, the, the South, the Latin American, the South American, really the world uh, problem of most companies, most CEOs, most leaderships trying to steal as much as they can. And Boyd's trying to gather up as many resources as he can for the country to defend itself while the the upper class on Panama is trying, including starting with the president, is trying to steal everything that they can and how it becomes a, a trade war in, in the black market where, where Boyd is actually trying to steal the stuff to get it to the country before the Panamanian president and the Panamanian upper crust can steal it and use it for their own nefarious means to try and get money to get themselves off-planet to save themselves and to help the rest of the country. Uh, Boyd's an awesome character. He's the hero of the book. H him and uh, the lady Jigna, Jigna from uh, the interior, one of the interior clans of Panama. Love those characters. Uh, Diaz, another character. He, he decides that, you know, the Dar Hell are really good at tracking and destroying incoming missiles, anything with a communication, anything with an engine, but they don't, they aren't automatically shooting birds out of the sky or shooting clouds. So there must be a level of technology that they'll ignore. So he tries gliders. And the only problem I have with this, and I guess it's not really a problem, he brings his gliders up and they don't shoot it down. The, the artificial intelligences of the porcelain don't. Uh, destroy the glider because they don't detect an engine, but he does use radios and later on it does Imply that the Dar Hell are able to triangulate radio signals and blast them out of the air uh, He takes his glider up for the different battles in the book and tries to give back intelligence so they can call the fire in because your mortars and your ships and your uh, artillery You know you don't have enough ammunition to just cover the entire countryside you have to know what you're aiming at in order to use your, your shells, use your explosives wisely to actually destroy the enemy. If you just waste it all shooting hillsides with no enemy, that they're absolutely no good. So Gia's is a, an essential part of the battle plan and of the storyline. The only thing that kind of bugged me is if they 
if I was going up, I would have dropped radio buoys with burst transmissions. I don't know if that's even possible. Well, yes, it is possible. You know, just have a little, you know, take your pictures, write your message, write whatever you have to do on your pictures, drop it off in a buoy, then get your glider away from the buoy before it sends the burst transmission so that the radio signal going out. Just an idea that I had. Uh, through, through the main battles and the first battles, he's okay. He gets killed in the end battles. Uh, he's one of the martyrs. He leaves his girlfriend, which is the president's daughter. Sad story, believable. Ringo's known for, you know, bloody brutality uh, in his heroes. You know, no, very few heroes are safe. Really, no hero is safe. Maybe one uh, of his books. Uh, excellent character, excellent ideas, fun ideas, using the balloons to take them up, release, and then use their gliders for the intelligence. Loved it. Uh, Daisy uses the stock market. This one kind of bugged me too as far as logistics where I say Ringo plays it a little fast and loose with his, uh, his plots. Daisy is an artificial intelligence, an insane artificial intelligence, and she uses the money that she has access to as the ship to play the stock market and make everybody rich. Only, which is very believable in and of itself if she was the only one. The only problem is, is the Dar Hell have millions of artificial intelligences at the same level of capability, or well, maybe not the same, but close to the same level of capability as Daisy to manipulate these markets and already control these markets. And it doesn't imply that she's up against them. It implies that she's able to go into the markets and take advantage of all these things that nobody else has saw. That you'd have to be a super intelligence like an AI to, to take advantage of. Cool idea. It breaks down if, you know, it, it, the idea that Daisy would be the first person to do this using an artificial intelligence kind of breaks down, isn't logical. But I still love the concept. And it, moves the story lawn in a fun way so it's forgivable um, another thing that Ringo really attacks is international treaties as far as using child soldiers using landmines different things the United States uh, has signed some of them but like the landmines and different things they haven't uh, it's a UN and Ringo is obviously against the UN uh, and he's against the world court uh, in the book they use the world court uh, the Dar Hell used the treaties with the Panamanian government to try and round up all of the heroes to, to cut the head off of any defense that Panama has, uh, try, gets Boyd, gets Jigna. And, and he really attacks the world court. And I'm torn about this. I actually wrote uh, my senior thesis on the world uh, international court. And it, it's really weak the way it is. Ringo plays off of the fear, the realistic fear, that a course is strong as the power backing it. You know, Andrew Jackson uh, told the Supreme Court of the United States with the Cherokee Indians, the Supreme Court told Andrew Jackson that you cannot do this, you cannot abuse the, these tribes like you are, and Andrew Jackson said, well, you've made your decision, try and enforce it. Now, a court's only as powerful as the guns backing it. And right now, the international court has no guns backing it. Uh, they've been used a little bit for some of the leaderships and some of the travesties that happened in Rwanda and a couple other different places. But that's as far, that's all the power that they have. They really couldn't manipulate the United States. But he's saying that in the future, with the Dar Hell backing, they would have the guns, they would have the power to take U.S. servicemen take the head and the leadership away from a country like Panama uh, as the world court and with these UN treaties and he mocks them, he says they're stupid. And in the scenario that he sets up, they are, you know, and it shows how they could be manipulated. And I didn't like it, but the problem is, is I didn't like it because I see the court as the only way that we can make a world government and we need something, need world governments, we need world courts, we need a world, we need the United Nations. Ringo loathes the, uh, the United Nations, obviously. And in the scenario he built up, it, he's absolutely right, it works. And they would have that kind of power, and the Dar Hell would have the ability to manipulate it. Historically, 
lots of uh, Rome, Carthage, Greece, the United States, has done the exact same thing like the Darhel used the UN court to manipulate different courts, to manipulate different governments to do what they want. So he sets it up saying how horrible it is, it works, really well done. The heroes turn the tail uh, turn the tables on the Dar Hell with the help of Daisy May. Uh, they're trying to get away with the Hemet ship, and Daisy May uses her sonar not to find the ship, but to find where she's getting holes in her sonar pattern, which would be a sonar absorbing ship. You know, it, the technology that you set up in your world when you're writing sci fi is fine as long as you don't step on it. I don't know of any other time that Ringo would be stepping on the technology or any reason why Daisy May couldn't have done what she did. But she finds the Darhel ship, she attacks it. It survives because apparently, big surprise, did I say Darhel ship? I mean the Hemet ship. The Hemet ship, ship is so advanced, but the Hemets are cowards. If they ever found, they're gone. The, the, the mission's awash. So with Daisy's help, uh, the Dar Hell and the president of Panama and all the elites that were trying to destroy the attack uh, don't get away. And so they're caught. And one of the cool things uh, is this particular Dar Hell that was leading the resistance to Panama uh, was a suicide. He, uh, the Dar Hell, very few of them, they, to, to attack somebody, they have to commit suicide. Uh, it releases... Once they get their bloodlust up, it releases a poison in their bloodstream, and they're going to die. And he was willing to do this. And it said that they had done this with different times and different ships, but they were like planet-killing ships. So th this Dar Hell, when they get him caught, he you know, goes berserk. He, he attacks uh, the hero. I can't remember which one it went to actually arrest him. Uh, and they have to bang at him several times to get him stopped. And they finally get him killed. So, I mean, that was a cool twist. You know, the Dar Hell, the suicidal Dar Hell. Which kind of brings up some of the things how the Dar Hell have these planet-destroying ships. And that's another thing where it's kind of loose and fast with the logistics. Uh, and then it comes down to nukes. Uh, Ringo sets up the rules and he follows the rules, so that's fine that the United States, that the world doesn't use nukes because they don't work and because the Greens, as he put it, or the Liberals are in control and are scared of using the nukes. That I have some doubts with. I'm pretty sure that we would use nukes. I would like to see a different reason than that, something like if we use nukes, the Dar Hell retaliate with nukes, because they have Arna Dwar. You know, it says that they leave radioactive wasteland. So the Dar Hell, not Dar Hell, the Pauceline use nukes in their warfare, but they never do in any of the books. And they don't use them, we don't use them. The reasoning, I think, I would like to see a little bit different reasoning. I don't like the reasoning. It seems to be that the Pauceline don't use them just because they, they figure they can do it without. But when it comes down to an entire tribe, an entire Pauceline nation, is about to be wiped out, they've already indicated that they will use nukes, but in this time, they're wiped out without using nukes. And then they also have their, their sleds that they ride around on with antimatter, and every once in a while, one of those gets shot and makes a small nuke. Uh, I, it helped, in the fighting, I couldn't help but wonder, well, why wouldn't some of these Pauceline kamikaze their sleds into the lines, trigger their own sleds, creating nukes that would devastate any defensive position. And that's the reason why we don't have wave formations, you know, old Napoleonic type, line up everybody and walk across the field. Our ability to destroy massive numbers um, is far greater than our ability to absorb them. You know, our offense is greater than defense. You know, and so that's the problem that Ringo's up against in trying to make a situation an enemy I've played it out on some of the simulators, and it works like if you have some Marines against 50,000 zombies, because the zombies don't have any way to get to the Marines before they get cut down, and they just keep going, unless the Marines, you know, in the simulator they don't, but in reality they would run out of bullets, then the zombies would take them. That's kind of the situation in the POS lanes. But the POS lanes have offensive weapons also that would open up the defensive lines. 
So I don't quite believe he does say that the Fossling are stupid, so they don't do these things, and that does cover a lot, and that is the reasoning. Um, I would think by accident, you know, once in a while, one of the God Kings would, would explode at the front lines and open up a hole in the defenses, though. But any, you know, I'm being nitpicky. The 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 story, the fights, that the, they still work. They're really a lot of fun. Uh, and to go back to a. You know, this book also covers some of the postling perspective and Guano. He's the first postling to ever surrender. And he goes through the swamps of Panama. Through the swamps, the mosquitoes are sucking him dry. And there's a Choco Indian that they stop and they eat his village. And he shows up and he starts just coming after him and using the jungle, using quicksand, using claymores, using his bow and arrow, using his ability to get away in the jungle from him. To slowly chip away at this group of postling until Guan is the last one left. And he's lost an eye. He's lost his, uh, his member, his reproductive organ. Uh, he's been damaged, legs, cuts. I mean, th this Indian has just been on their trail. And he's like a little mongoose. Just destroyed the entire old, the, the entire uh, group of postling until Guanamara is the last one. And finally, he runs onto a military base and gets caught in the Constantina wire. And he surrenders. He's just like, I don't know if he, and he played it really well because it's like, I don't care if you eat me, just don't put me back in the jungle. Whatever you want to do, just kill me. And then they take it as a surrender. He's the first one to surrender. And, you know, they buy him, Boyd buys him. Really cool ideas. It's a really fun story. The Choco Indian, uh, you know, terrorizing him. And chasing through the jungles. Loved the story. Loved it. Uh, they had the final battle with the ships. Where the postling takes all of the. All of their sleds. All their weaponry. And they do finally get the ships sunk. Daisy has actually made a physical avatar. With a regeneration tank. And she has a physical form now. Uh, she takes her captain. And, and the cat Morgan. They all go into the tank. In the very end, you know, they come out. Uh, well, they get the ship gets sunk, and then Boyd becomes. They make him dictator, which is cool. And in war is really what you need. Uh, you just gotta hope that you got a good one. And Boyd turns out to be a good one. He raises the ship at the very end. The, they find the tank. They open it up, and uh, Captain McNair, Daisy, and the cat has now became an intelligent cat that can talk. Really cool ending. Really fun story. Definitely read the, well, if you're watching this part, I hope you've already read the book. Give me some of your comments. Tell me what you think. Uh, tell me where I'm wrong on some of my ideas. Uh, you know, adult discussions. Uh, by no means am I attacking Ringo on a personal level. Uh, I just like to throw out and nitpick some of the, the, the physics and some of the ideas because I like those kinds of discussions. Uh, I love Ringo's books. I love him as an author. It makes me sad that he doesn't write more. Hopefully, we ought to send him some messages on Facebook asking him to, you know, get off of his super long vacation, come back and write some more books for us. But anyway, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, I hope that this review gave you some ideas. Please give me some of your feedback, and you have a good one. Bye.